the narcissist's warning signals. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what it is that compels the narcissist to act in the way that we do. If you haven't listened to my video, What Makes the Narcissist, I recommend that you do. In essence, we're formed from a genetic predisposition towards narcissism allied with a lack of control environment, and I explain in that video much more of what that means and how it comes about. What this means is that we need the prime aims, fuel and control, character traits and residual benefits. Or we need fuel because it is our lifeblood, and this is what powers us, that keeps the construct intact. Fuel is the glue, if you will, that melds the construct into place. Control is necessary because we were affected by a lack of control, and therefore we must always now have it. Character trait acquisition is necessary to create the construct, to keep it in place, for the purposes of imprisoning the creature and for the purposes of drawing more people to us, making it easier to control them and easier to gain more fuel. And residual benefits covers a vast array of things, ranging from money, somewhere to live, someone to drive us around, access to networks, and so on and so forth. Those are the four, th four key things that every single narcissist wants and needs, although most don't realize it. We have a hypersensitivity to the issue of control. In the same way that a dog will hear a frequency that you and I cannot, the narcissist is attuned to pick up on threats to our control in a way that you wouldn't even notice as a non-narcissist. Our ability to do this is unmatched because it needs to be that way because of the way that we have been created. We see the world through a lens of control. You're either giving us control or you're not, hence our black and white thinking. If you're under control, you're white. If you're threatening control, you become painted black. What is it, though, that causes the narcissist to act to gather the things that we require, i.e. to gain those prime aims. I, as the ultra, alongside greater narcissists, know that we need the prime aims. We know that we need fuel. Greater narcissists might not call it fuel, but they know that they need that emotional output from other individuals. They know that they need that validation, that response to matter, they know that they need to control people, and they know when it's being threatened. They know that they need to take parts of other people and bolt them onto themselves, the character trait acquisition, and they recognize that they need the residual benefits. Or, perhaps in another way, are entitled to those residual benefits. The greatest and the ultra, because we are aware, know that we need all of those things. So, for example, if I'm having a conversation with somebody and they suggest that I'm wrong, my conscious response is, this person's threatening my control of them. I now need to take action to nullify that threat to control. That is my actual thought process. I don't think to myself, hmm, this person's disagreeing with me, I need to put them straight. Although I recognize that is what they are doing, I also see it in terms of, this person is threatening my control. Were someone foolishly to ignore me. Similarly, I would recognize they're ignoring me, but I know and I consciously think, okay, they're threatening my control. I now need to take steps. And it happens instantaneously because of the way that my narcissism has evolved in a similar way to that of Greater's, that we see what is happening, know what is happening, and know what we need to do about it. It's conscious. And this enables us to plan, not only in that moment, but also with regard to future steps, have a regard for the consequences of our actions, to think ahead, to scheme, to manipulate, to be Machiavellian. When it comes to the lesser and mid-range narcissist, they don't actually know 
that they need the prime aims. They don't actually consciously recognize that the person is threatening their control. They will see it as, this person's being argumentative. This person won't let me do what I want. That person is ignoring me. That person didn't invite me when I should have been invited. Now, when that happens, that is threatening the narcissist's control. And the narcissism, if you will, sitting in the unconscious, recognizes it as a threat to control. And therefore, having seen that this individual is threatening the narcissist's control, has to activate as the self-defense mechanism that it is to nullify that threat to control. How does it make the narcissist do this? Quite simply, there's the warning signal. The lesser or mid-range narcissist does not think, ah, this person is arguing with me, they are threatening my control of the situation and them, I now need to nullify that threat to control. They don't have that thought because they're not aware of what they are. The narcissism causes a response by way of a warning signal for those particular narcissists, so they act upon it. So when it comes to wounding and being challenged, the fury of the narcissist is ignited so that there is a response that is instantaneous, that is powerful, so that it drives the narcissist to do something. For example, if you threatened the narcissist's control and the narcissist wasn't moved to do anything, he would lose control, the construct would fall apart, and he would cease to exist. He wouldn't be able to function. And accordingly, if the narcissism, if you will, just shrugged its shoulders and said, OK, we don't have control over this individual, then so what? The narcissism isn't doing its job. It needs to do something to make the narcissist act. So, it tells the narcissist, this person's being unfair. They may not be actually unfair, but through the perspective of the narcissistic perspective, they, narcissism, if you will, almost whispers in the mind of the narcissist, this person's being unfair, you need to do something about it. Or, this person hates me, and that's out of order. Or, how dare this person talk to me in this way? Whatever it is, the narcissism, through the narcissistic perspective, causes the person who is threatening the narcissist's control to be viewed as the perpetrator, as the protagonist. So that the neighbour, whose branches of his apple tree are growing over the fence into the narcissist's garden, is viewed as self-important, inconsiderate and selfish to rile the narcissist so that he goes round and hammers on the door and demands that the branches are cut back in an aggressive fashion. The overgrown branches threaten the narcissist's control and therefore his narcissism causes him to act on that by viewing the behaviour as inconsiderate and selfish and making him feel furious about it. Whether it's the narcissist feeling hard done to, maybe feeling afraid, feeling entitled. The fact is, the narcissism must activate a warning signal to compel the narcissist to act. And that occurs both in terms of thought and feeling. The feeling will be a form of fury, either heated or cold. And the thought will be, how dare this person treat me this way? Or, who do they think they are, talking to me like that? Or, how rude? Or, how selfish? Or, even, this person's behaving like a narcissist. Who do they think they are? The narcissism plants that seed, drops that thought in there, which is accurate from the narcissistic perspective, to compel the narcissist to act upon it. Because if he didn't, 
He wouldn't go and get the control. He wouldn't seek the fuel or the character traits or the residual benefits. And the narcissist would not then be able to function. Like some twisted guardian angel, what the narcissism does is it creates a thought, a view, an opinion in the mind of the narcissist, allies it with the fury, so the narcissist is moved to act upon it. You have warning signals, but in a different way. Your stomach rumbles and you feel lightheaded. Why? You're hungry, so that you're compelled to go and get something to eat. Because if you didn't, you'd waste away. So your body has these warning signals to make you go and do something. You experience thirst, because you're dehydrated, to compel you to go and take in fluids. If you twist your ankle, you experience pain, so that you stop moving on it, that you take remedial action to attend to the injury, elevating it, compressing it with ice, and resting it, so that you don't make it worse. The narcissism creates its own warning signal when there is a threat to control, when there is a need to gather fuel. And that is what compels the unaware narcissist to act. Those are the narcissist warning signals. And that is what makes the narcissist act in order to achieve the prime aims and in so doing, continue to survive and thrive. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.